Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 19A. This is the first of two tutorials that are focused on non-monetary asset exchanges. Tutorial 19A will focus on such exchanges in situations without commercial substance. Tutorial 19B will follow through accounting for non-monetary asset exchanges with commercial substance. We have one basic learning objective for this tutorial, and that is to review accounting for non-monetary asset exchanges in situations where commercial substance is not present. R recall from the text that basically commercial substance means that the company's economic position uh, would have been significantly altered after the exchange. So in a situation where commercial substance is not present, what we're saying is after the exchange, the company's economic position has not been altered significantly. And one of the ways that we can test that is by looking at the future cash flows resulting from the exchange. So if a business isn't expected to realize any difference in the amount or timing or risk of future cash flows, then really there is no change in economic position. This is like changing or exchanging a red truck for a blue truck where the trucks are pretty much exactly the same. The maintenance costs and the insurance and other cash flows associated with the truck won't be significantly different. However, exchanging a truck for an airplane would have completely different sets of cash flows, maintenance, insurance. And so in situations like that, we would anticipate commercial substance would be present. Our example follows the Chekhov and Sulu Corp example on non-monetary exchanges. So please make sure that you download the correct file so you can follow along. Our first requirement is dealing with preparing the required journal entries to record the exchange for both parties, Chekhov and Sulu, assuming that the asset exchange is determined to not have commercial substance. We will begin with Chekhov. It doesn't matter which one you start with. You have to pick one, so we'll start with Chekhov. And what we're usually looking to do is start our journal entries with a debit. So we would be replacing equipment. So we're going to remove equipment from our balance sheet and bring on new equipment. In a normal transaction, we would record the equipment at its cost. In our case here, however, we're not really quite sure what the value of the new equipment is going to be. So we're going to have to figure that out. So what we can do first is start with something that's just a little bit easier. Let's remove the old asset from the books so we can derecognize the old asset. And by doing that, we of course debit or accumulated depreciation of 92,500 and credit the cost of that equipment for 205,000. The next thing that we can do that's easy is record the amount of cash. Recall from the data in this transaction, Chekhov pays as part of transferring the asset, it pays an additional $25,000 in cash and so we're going to credit the cash for 25,000. Now we can work to determine how much the value of the new equipment should be coming in and what we do is we can calculate that basically as the cost of the old equipment minus the accumulated depreciation of the old equipment plus cash. What we're basically doing here is determining the book value of the assets that are given up. In situations of no commercial substance, the value of the new asset is going to be the lesser of the fair value of the new asset and the book value of the old asset plus or minus any cash paid or received. Basically, we're referring to the book value or carrying value of all the assets given up, including cash. And so what you have is 112,500 in assets given up on the asset plus another $25,000 in cash paid. That means that there is a total carrying value in assets being given up of 135,000. However, this is a very important piece here. We cannot record the value of a new asset brought in at more than its fair value. So if you go back and look at the data, the fair value of the equipment that's coming in from Sulu has a fair value of 130,000. Therefore, we can only record this at a maximum of $130,000. Before continuing, make sure that you're able to understand what's happening here because this is a very important piece. Then the last thing, of course, is to finish our journal entry off. If we just go with the four entries that we had prior, we find that it wouldn't balance. So in order for a journal entry to balance, we would actually have a loss on disposal of equipment. And we can calculate that loss simply as the 25,000 in cash plus the 205,000 original cost in the equipment minus the accumulated depreciation of 92,500 
and less the value of the new equipment. So we're really just plugging this journal entry to give us a loss of 7,500. It's important to note that in non-monetary exchanges with no commercial substance, there is no gain or loss recognized on the actual exchange of assets themselves. However, in this case, there's a loss because the fair value of the new asset is less than the carrying value of the asset given up. So we have a loss here as a result of an adjustment to fair value and a loss is recognized because the asset must be recorded at the lower of the fair value amounts, $7,500. We can actually also show this another way in terms of a proof. If we say that the fair value of the new asset less the book value or carrying value of the old of 112,500 less cash paid gives us a gain or in this case a loss of 7,500. And if we combine all these together, this ends up being the value of the total assets given up 137,500, which is what we had in the previous slide before. So the value of the new asset minus the value or the carrying value of all assets given up, including cash, is a loss of 7,500. So this 7,500 here is provable. And now we can proceed to Sulu. Uh, our first debit entry under a normal acquisition would be to debit the asset. But again, we don't know what the value of the asset is just yet. We have to figure that out. What we can do here is taking the same approach, we can say that, okay, well, the value of the new asset is going to be the value of the assets given up. The cost of the old asset is 197000 and the accumulated depreciation on it is 70920 So the book value of the equipment asset given up is 126080 And then coming off of that is 25000 in cash. So basically, the cash received from checkoff in essence, reduces the carrying value or the amount of assets given up because there's $25,000 in cash coming in. So we could think of it as the carrying value of the net assets given up. And in the case of cash coming in, of course, that reduces the, uh, the amount. So the net book value of assets given up being $126,000 on the equipment offset by $25,000 in cash received is $101,800. But again, because we cannot record the value of the new asset for more than its fair value, if you look at the data, the machine that Sulu is bringing on from Chekhov, Chekhov's old equipment basically, only had a fair value of 95,000. Therefore, we must debit the equipment for 95,000 because it's less than the carrying value of the assets given up. The other easy parts of our journal entry here are the uh, accumulated depreciation and the old equipment. We could have done this one first in the same sequence as with checkoff rather than try to figure out what the equipment value is first. You could go through and do the accumulated depreciation, the equipment, and then of course the cash. And so if we included the cash here, then we would come up and try to figure out the value of the equipment and then determine if we have any gain or loss, which we will have in a minute. So now, in order to make our journal entry balance, we need some kind of calculated value or plug in our entry. And in order for this all to work, we need debit $6,080. And that's just calculated as the 197 old equipment minus the value of the new equipment at its fair value minus the 70920 in accumulated depreciation. And then, of course, subtracting cash. And what we have here is a loss on disposal of equipment. This is not a loss on exchange because what we'll see in a second here is this also is the result of the new asset being adjusted to its fair value. Here's the proof for our calculation. We have the fair value of the asset brought in as 95,000. And if we take off the book value or carrying value of the old asset being 126,080, and then offsetting that by the 25,000 cash received, we have a difference of $6,080. And that's a negative value, so it's a loss. We're going to debit that. And if you'd like to look at it this way, fair value of the new asset minus the $101,080 net carrying value of the assets given up, okay, because this includes the 126,080 minus the cash. So this slide just shows both completed scenarios for both parties side by side. Again, we have recorded checkoffs new equipment at the fair value of Sulu's old equipment. Sulu's new equipment is Chekhov's old equipment with a fair value of 95,000. The proof again is that in both cases, 
we've got the fair values, and then we're subtracting the net book or carrying value of the assets that are given up. In this case, we have the cost minus accumulated depreciation, and then subtracting cash because checkoff paid cash. In Sulu's case, we have cost minus accumulated depreciation, but then we are adding cash because Sulu is receiving cash of 25000 So in both cases here, for both parties, the transactions result in losses on disposal. And again, these aren't losses on exchanges because in situations of non-commercial substance, we don't have a gain or loss on the exchange of assets themselves, but we can have a loss on the adjustment to fair value because the new equipment in both cases brought on has a fair value of less than the carrying value of the net assets given up. This is just another way to look at it. You see here what I've done is I've combined the cash into the carrying value of the asset given up calculation. So again, the fair value of the new asset is still 130000 for checkoff, but the carrying value of the assets given up, and I say here including the cash paid, is 137500 still yielding 7500 loss. And the same approach can be taken for Sulu here. The $101,080 is the carrying value or the net book value of the equipment less cash received, giving a loss of 6080 So now for some key points to remember. Basically, in situations where commercial substance is not present, the value of the incoming or the new asset must be the lesser or the lower of these two calculations, the fair value of the asset coming in. And so we had that in both situations with Chekhov and Sulu. The fair value of the asset that was coming in was less than the book value or the carrying value of the outgoing old asset plus or minus cash, or you can combine these all together and, and call it carrying value of the total assets given up. In addition, the value of the incoming asset cannot exceed its fair value. So this supports this first point here. The lower of the two basically means that uh, the maximum that we can record the new asset at is the carrying value of the assets going out. We cannot record an asset for more than its fair value. So the fair value is worth less than we're stuck with the fair value. And what this does, of course, is it prohibits gains and losses on exchanges of similar assets. And we talked about the whole idea of not having commercial substance. If we're exchanging a blue truck for a red truck and the future cash flows are very similar, the company will not realize any significant difference in its economic position. So the company shouldn't be realizing gains on exchanges of those assets. Losses are allowed, and those losses are essentially the result of adjustments to fair value because the asset coming in has a lower fair value than the book value of the assets going out. This concludes tutorial 19a on exchanges of assets in situations where commercial substance does not exist. Please proceed now to tutorial 19b to review situations where commercial substance does exist.